Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. As we start our session today, the topic that we are going to reflect today is finding peace in the midst of a storm. And the scripture that we are going to study and reflect upon is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35, right up till chapter 5, verse 1. So these are the scriptures that we are going to reflect upon. <coughs> It will be nice that if you are sitting with your Bible and you open to the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 onwards, right up till chapter 5, verse 1, so that uh, we can all follow together. I'd like to start this session with an uh, incident that happened in my life. I may have shared with this group uh, some time ago, but I will just like to start again. This was in the year 2000. 22, when uh, my wife started, you know, complaining about a problem that she will often find with her stomach. She will often find a little uneasiness, going through feelings of uneasiness in her stomach. Or sometimes, you know, she will uh, just find a slight pain that was happening in her stomach. <clears throat> we went to our family doctor and he just... Uh, happened to tell her maybe it's some problem with the gas or maybe some other thing that may be happening. And he kept on giving her a few medication that brought no relief. It was somewhere in the mid, uh, middle of September that uh, one day I was happened to, happened to go to my gym doctor in the evening just to pay a visit, which I do every three months as I follow an exercise and a diet schedule. So sometimes I just go to visit him. Uh, just finding about my health and how things are just going on. It's a visit that I do every three months. So I happened to tell her, why don't you also come and uh, show yourself to this doctor? We all we already had a family doctor, but I said, why don't you come and show yourself to this gym doctor? As soon as we went there, after I finished, the gym doctor started checking her and uh, he found something a little serious. He just called me and he says, I would like you to touch the stomach of your wife and see how hard it has become. So as I, as I put my hand and as I was pressing, I suddenly felt as if something like a stone was there in the stomach. I could literally feel that. He says, I think so. We will need to take some test and some reports. This looks a little serious. So I happened to ask him, as soon as he said that word, you know, for a moment, we both got a little disturbed that what serious it can be. But he says, you know, I would like you all to do the test and then we will know what exactly is the problem. He gave us a list of tests that she had to go through, which next morning, immediately as, as soon as we got up, we just went right up till the afternoon time. We were going through all those tests. And while she was doing this test, especially the sonography, the one who was doing the sonography says, you know, in your stomach, there are on your bag, there are multiple fibroids. And some of those fibroids have grown uh, considerably. They have become quite big. How come you never knew that this is happening? How come you never understood that this was happening? So we asked him, what can be the solution? He says, the solution is immediate hospitalization and immediate surgery. We immediately took the reports to a gynec and the gynec going through the reports. In fact, we showed it to two, three gynecs. All three of them said the same thing. She needs immediate hospitalization and immediate surgery because the fibroids have gone uh, grown considerably big. At that particular time, we had a few members of our prayer group who said, you know, you don't need to go for surgery. The Lord will heal you. And of course, we heard that and we decided to pray. We kept on praying for a week for the healing of my wife's fibroids, you know, all those multiple fibroids that were there, that they will, the Lord will heal them. But after one week, when we took the report, we just discovered it has grown more. And we had to take up a decision immediately to 
get her hospitalized. We had to immediately find a good hospital, which we found by God's grace. And I, I still remember getting her admitted to that hospital. It was somewhere in the night. Next day, her surgery was fixed. And as uh, in the night, the doctor said, I would like to do one more test before I go for the surgery. And as she did the test, she was a little shocked. He says, in the last 15 days, the fibroids have grown. They are growing at a very rapid speed. They have grown 25% more. And now it has become very risky. You all delayed. Why did you all delay another 15 days? When I told you all, when the reports came that she needs immediate hospitalization. I never told my wife about this because she was admitted. The doctor was talking to me. So usually when you are doing a surgery, they fill a, they make you fill a form where they ask your permission that you know that you give them the permission to do this surgery. One of the relatives have to fill the form. Along with the form, the doctor wrote another letter where there were certain technical words, the meaning of which was the surgery was going to be a bit risky. Uh, anything can happen during the surgery. Uh, and I give them the permission. I have no objection. But as soon as I read that letter, I said, I have filled a form. Why this, why this letter? It says, uh, now the fibroids have grown considerably and doing a surgery is going to be risky. So we need permission for that. And I was at that time saying, you know, how can I give a permission like that, you know, after reading that. So I remember it was 12, 15 in the night, happened to call my mentor, the one who mentors me, called him in the night, shared the whole thing with him. And he says, you know, Victor, you have no other option. You have no other option, but you have to go ahead and give the permission. You have to sign that. But at that particular time, my mentor asked me, tell me, uh, I know you are very anxious now, but tell me which is the safest place you can keep your wife. According to you, what is the safest place? And I said, the safest place for me is the hands of the Lord. He says, right now, I won't pray for your wife, but I would like you to pray for your own wife. I would like you to pray for your wife and place her in the Lord's hands. I made a prayer <clears throat> and I started imagining in my mind that I am placing my wife, literally placing my wife in the hands of the Lord. That henceforth now, the Lord is taking over whatever happens. After I did that, there was a deep peace that I experienced. Next morning, as the surgery started, it was early in the morning, 7.30. She was taken in the operation theater. The surgery started somewhere immediately. She, 7 o'clock she was taken and the surgery started around 7.30 in the operation theater. The surgery was supposed to go for two hours. It took six hours. It took six hours. I was sitting there outside the operation theater praying. But as I was praying, I also sensed the Lord telling me, uh, don't just keep praying, just trust me. You have prayed enough. You have placed your wife in my hands. Now I just will like you to go to sleep. Because I was exhausted. And he says, the reason was I had to go to sleep was, he says, tonight your wife will need you. She will be going through immense pain after the surgery. And you will be needed tonight. It will be like a night vigil for you. You will have to take care of her. As I slept outside, you know, there is a bench outside the operation theater. I just went off to sleep there. I was just lying down there. And I told the nurse, you know, as soon as the surgery is over or if the doctor needs anything, they have told me sometimes they may need uh, bottles of blood, which I have to arrange, which I did previous night. They just told me, I told, just told the nurse, if there is any need, just wake me up. And when the surgery gets over, just wake me up. Because two hours had passed and I was just wondering why the surgery is taking so much of time. She went in at 7.30 and she came out at 1.30 in the afternoon. As I was resting there, I, was, I, went, I suddenly never knew that I went into deep sleep. I was surprised that I could sleep at such a difficult moment in my life. I believe that was the grace of God working in my life at that particular moment. 
as i was sleeping there were a few relatives who came few people who came and when they saw me sleeping outside the operation theater uh, they suddenly felt that that was not something proper to do and of course they started talking a few things against me thinking that i was fast asleep but i could hear all that the spirit of the lord just told me in my heart just don't listen to them they are not going to come and take care of you or help you out tonight it is you and you need rest you continue resting i got up at 1:30 the, the doctor came out and i got up and i went and visited the doctor to know what had happened and the doctor just caught my hand and said you know the surgery has been successful your wife is out of danger as soon as i heard that you see but she also told me you know in between we were almost on the verge of giving up some things my hands were trembling but i do not know i felt as if someone is holding my hand as i am doing the surgery and i suddenly realized i had placed my wife into the lord's hand and it was the lord who was guiding the doctor's hand after the surgery was over my wife came back you know after a few days she came back home and i was supposed to take care of her the doctor had told me she will need utmost care for the next two months okay she won't be able to she needs complete bed rest and utmost care for the next two months and i remember in those days teachings were going online offline meetings were just starting it was we were just coming out of the pandemic and teachings were going online you know at that particular moment so i said teachings are online so i'll be giving my talks sitting at home so i won't be going out so i will be taking care of her and the next one week i was taking care of her it was after one week that uh, i had a online session for a group of couples with whom i was doing a session on marriage and married life as i was doing the session i suddenly developed a pain in my back the pain was so intense that i almost felt was feeling very giddy while i was doing the session and as i felt that giddiness i felt like i was going to faint and fall i i just took a break in that session i told one of the music ministry member just to take a few songs and i will come back again for the session he gave me a 5 minutes break and i just decided to lie down i lied down in that 5 minutes i got up but the pain was not going away i continued my session and i finished my session and i just after finishing my session i closed my laptop and i was just lying down i suddenly found that after that when i lied down i couldn't get up i just couldn't get up i decided to somehow struggle i decided i struggled and i decided to stand up but as soon as i stood up just coming out of the sofa and i stood up on the ground i fell down i had a fall again i went and i lied down and the next morning i suddenly found i was not able to get up at all <clears throat> it was as if i felt i had a paralytic attack i we immediately called the x-ray fellow who came home and took the x-ray of my back but the reports were x-ray reports were very clear but yet i was finding it very difficult to get up i remember i had to go to the washroom i was desperate to go to the washroom and i had i i was crawling i was crawling i just went on my hands and i was literally crawling my way to the washroom and as i sat in the washroom within one minute the pain had become so intense that i was screaming and yelling i just couldn't bear the pain it went on for another 2 3 days till they had to do uh, one of the doctors suggested i do a mri because the x-ray reports were showing everything is fine they needed to find an mri why the pain was there in the back and i was telling the doctor i am supposed to take care of my wife at this particular time she is already on bed uh, i need to get well soon so i still remember going to this hospital mri hospital when i went in an auto someone took me in an auto and as soon as i got down from the auto i couldn't stand from the road to the hospital i was crawling on my hands 
literally crawling around uh, 30 to 40 feet. I was crawling. I just, I couldn't walk. I was crawling and the guard who was there, the watchman who was there felt so sad. Seeing me crawling, he immediately went and told inside, you know, this patient, I think, is a little critical. We need to do his MRI immediately because he couldn't, cannot stand and neither he can sit. As soon as I went in the hospital, they made me change and they immediately took my MRI. And I, after the reports came, I suddenly realized yeah, I have got a very acute slip disc. Very acute. And the doctor immediately suggested that you need an immediate surgery because this is very acute. Otherwise, you know, uh, maybe it will be a little harmful. You need to do a surgery immediately. I decided to wait for some time and uh, my physio was there. So I called my physio, showed the reports. The physio said, I don't think so. You need to go for a surgery. If you allow me, I will take certain exercises and I will start treating you, treating you. And within now, next two months, you can be fine. But it will take two months for you to recover. And the next two months, I happened to go through the physio exercises. And by God's grace, without surgery, I became all right. But those two months, my wife was on bed. She was in the bedroom. I was on bed. I was in the hall. And our children had to do everything for us. We couldn't, I couldn't do anything because of the slip disc. I couldn't stand. I couldn't sit. The gynec who came to visit my wife at that time just looked at both of us and he says, this is a very rare case where both the husband and wife are bedridden at the same time. But then she told me something. She says, you know, Mr. Victor, this happens very rarely, but I would like you to be a little positive. I would like you that this is a rare time which you and your wife will get together. Both of you are sick. Both of you can't get up. You all have to only lie on the bed. I suggest you all lie besides each other on the bed and just keep talking with each other. Because this two months that you all are getting in your life to be with each other, very rarely you all will get a chance to suffer together. Now you all are suffering together. I suggest spend this time with each other because you all can't do anything else. And it took three, two months for both of us to recover and get normal. In those two months, I had to cancel most of my talks. But I remember the only group that never allowed me to cancel the talks was the Divine UK group. They were having programs for the youth online. And when I shared with them the Divine UK group, which does sessions every evening on the YouTube, they just told me, put your video off. Don't put your video on. We will like you to put your video off. We'll just uh, put the Blessed Sacrament there. And you can continue preaching because we won't find a preacher uh, immediately after this. And there were sessions that I did lying on my bed with my slip disc for the Divine UK group where we had a youth audience of around seven to 800 online. And I did three to four sessions for them. That was the only sessions that I did in that time. The rest, all the talks were canceled because I couldn't, I was bedridden. I couldn't put my video on. We both came out, me and my wife, we both came out of that time spiritually strong, relationally strong. As I reflect on this story, that September 2021, and that I remember that 15th of September when we got up in the morning, we never realized that there was going to a storm coming in the evening. And it came so badly that the next two months, it really took us. We went through a storm. One of the things that we experienced deeply in the storm was the peace of God. Now we have a story of Jesus that I would like to read in Mark chapter 4 from verse 35, where Jesus, the disciples faced a storm in their life. I'd like to read this story first. Mark chapter 4 verse 35. It says. That day when evening came. He said to his disciples. 
let us go over to the other side this word other side is going to be a very important word we will look at towards the end but this jesus is telling the disciples let's go to the other side leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat there were also other boats with him was 37 and a furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was really sinking was 38 jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion the disciples woke him up and said to him teacher don't you care if we drown was 39 he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still then the wind wind died down and it was completely calm was 40 he said to his disciples why are you so afraid do you still have no faith was 41 they were terrified and asked each other who is this that even the winds and waves obey him chapter 5 verse 1 they went across the lake they went across the lake to the other side now this is where remember we started the story with the word other side now we find they reach the other side to the region of gersinis as we reflect on the stories there are seven things that we are going to learn from this story which will help us to experience peaceful peace to experience the peace of the lord when we face or when we come across a storm in our lives seven things that we can learn from this passage that will help us to face the storms of life i would like to take the seven things and use the letter p and we are going to reflect on seven p's seven p words in the storm what do we do when we face the storms of life how do we experience the peace of god in the midst of a storm maybe right now some of you are going through a storm at this particular moment in your life and you are very disturbed at this particular moment waiting when will this get over or even questioning in your mind will this ever get over so let's reflect on the seven things first the first p remember we are going to reflect on the seven p's the first p the probability the probability of a storm what do i mean by probability yes storms come look at this the disciples are starting their journey they are getting into a boat and as they are getting into a boat they never had weather reports at that time as we have today and the weather reports tell us that today evening there is going to be a storm there were no such weather reports the sea was very calm at that particular time they never expected that a little time as they go a little ahead they will encounter a storm they never expected that in fact when they are starting the journey everything is everything is calm everything is going on well i remember in my own life on that day of september when we got up in the morning there was so much of laughter in the house there was so much of peace in the house there was things were just going well we never realized that in the evening when we will visit a doctor he will happen to give us news that will really shake us storms come suddenly that's the quality of a storm they come suddenly they come here we find in the story the storm comes suddenly upon the disciples the storm is doesn't announce it doesn't announce that i am coming today evening in your life get ready it comes unannounced and that's what happened the disciples when they were starting everything was cool everything was calm everything was going well and suddenly the storm comes they never expected the storm to come they never expected that as they go a little ahead 
that they will encounter a storm. If you look at the storms that we have faced in our life, we never expected it to come. It comes unannounced. It comes suddenly. That's what it means, the probability of a storm. But it comes. It comes. And it comes all of a sudden. So that's the first thing we learn, that storms come suddenly. That's what I mean by the probability of a storm. They come unannounced. Second P that we want to look at, the paradox of a storm. Paradox of a storm. What is the paradox here? Let's have a look at the paradox here. Paradox means there are two things happening which are opposite. Two opposite things are happening at the same time. It's like north and south happening at the same time. So what is the paradox in this storm? If you look at this passage, the disciples, when they started the journey, they never decided to start. They never decided. It was the Lord who told them. Look at, it says that day, verse 35, when the evening came, he said to his disciples, that means Jesus told them to get into the boat. Jesus told them to get into the boat and Jesus told them to go to the other side. The disciples were obeying the word of Jesus when the storm came. They were walking in obedience. They were in the will of God. They were obeying the Lord. That's the first point we see in the second P, the paradox. They were obeying the Lord. The Lord told them to get into the boat. The Lord told them to let's go to the other side. And the disciples obeyed the Lord. As the disciples were walking in obedience, the storm came. They were in the will of God. And the storm came in the will of God. Oftentimes we think if I'm just obeying the Lord and if I'm just walking in His will and if I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do, no storm will come. I would like you all to know your note in this passage. The disciples never decided to go to the other side. They never decided to get into the boat. It was the Lord who was telling them, get into the boat and let's go to the other side. The disciples were walking in obedience. They were in the perfect will of God when the storm came. There are some of us, we think, if I'm in the perfect will of God, if I'm obeying the word of God, storms won't come. They come. Even the will of God has storms. Even when we are walking in obedience, we have done no wrong, but we are obeying the Lord. We are doing the right thing. And yet sometimes wrong happens with us. So that's the paradox. First, the first paradox is they were Walking in obedience. The storm never came because of their disobedience. They were living a life of obedience when the storm came. The storm never came because they were out of the will of God. No, they were in the will of God when they faced the storm. So that's the first thing. They were obeying the word. But the second paradox we see is the storm came even when Jesus was with them in the boat. Jesus was with them and yet the storm came. And many a times we think if the Lord is with us, no bad thing will happen with us, to us. Nothing bad will happen to us. No storm can come when the Lord is there with us. Here the disciples, Jesus, the, the, the disciples had obeyed the word of Jesus. They had not only obeyed the word of Jesus, but it says they took Jesus along. Look at the verse 36. Leaving the crowd they took him. The disciples not only were obeying Jesus, they were walking with Jesus when the storm came. They were very close to Jesus when the storm came. And oftentimes we think if we are walking very close to the Lord, we won't have any suffering. We won't have any problem. And that's the paradox in this story. The paradox is the storm comes even when the Lord is with you. The storm comes even when you are walking in obedience. You are in the perfect will of God. Be careful of anyone who says, 
If you obey the Lord, everything will go fine with you. If the Lord is with you and you get closer to the Lord, everything will be fine with you. You will have no storm. Storms are a paradox. I am walking in obedience. I am living in the perfect will of God. I am walking close to the Lord. The Lord is with me and I am with the Lord. And yet the storm comes. Yet the storm comes and it has happened to some of us. We wonder what wrong I have done. And in fact, there is someone who will come and tell us there are some blocks and barriers. I'm not saying that there are no blocks and barriers at times. But brothers and sisters, when we go through a storm, we have to find out, was I walking with the Lord? Am I walking with the Lord? Am I living in obedience? Sometimes the storm also comes because of disobedience. We have the story of Jonah whom God told to go to Nineveh, but he decided to disobey the Lord, and that was a storm of disobedience. God had clearly told him what to do, and he was doing something opposite. He was going to the opposite side, and the storm comes in the sea. So yes, the storm also comes because of disobedience, but it can also come when we are obedient. We have to discern, we have to look, have I, am I walking in the will of God? How do I know I'm doing the will of God? Look at your vocation. Our vocation, most of us, is our family life. Are you living out the vocation very well? Are you really following the word of God in your life very well? And if you are following the word of God, and if you are still walking close to the Lord, and the storm comes, you don't need to worry. The Lord is there. But that's the paradox. The paradox is, even when I'm walking in obedience, even when the Lord is with me, I'll face the storm. The disciples were walking in obedience. They were, Jesus was with them and yet they faced a storm. The third P that we learn is the presence in the storm of our life. The presence. What does God give us when we go through the storms in our life? It says Jesus was in the boat. When they faced the storms, Jesus was with them in the boat. The presence of Jesus was there in the boat. Jesus was present in the boat with them when they faced the storm. Now sometimes, please listen to me carefully. Sometimes we are not interested in the presence of God. We are interested in we are not interested in experiencing the presence of God in the storm. We are interested. Listen to this. We are interested and we want to see the power of God in the storm. I want to see the power of God in the storm. Sometimes God is just present with you in the storm. But we don't want the presence. <laughs> Our prayer is not the presence. We want the power. We have got so used to, especially in the charismatic renewal. Power, you know, power, the Lord's power, the Lord's power, the Lord's power. Sometimes the Lord says, I'm with you in the storm. Isn't that enough? I'm with you. My presence is with you. But we are, we, we have been taught and we have grown. That if God is present, his power also will be present. Sometimes it's only the presence of God and God mysteriously decides, mysteriously decides not to use his power. It's a mysterious decision by God, but his presence is there. But we don't want his presence. We are not interested in his presence. And even if we believe his presence is there, we'll say, God, if you are present, do something. That's what the disciples did. And of course, Jesus, God gets up and shows his power, but then he corrects them. Why were you afraid? He says the problem was not the storm. The problem was the fear of the storm. The storm is never the problem. The fear of the storm is problem. The problem is never the problem. The fear of the problem is a big problem. Rejection is never a problem. Fear of rejection is a big problem. 
Failure is never a problem. The fear of failure is a big problem. The Lord was present with them in the storm. But sometimes we are like the disciples. We are not interested in the presence of God. We want the power of God. We are more interested in God manifesting his power than his presence. This showed the disciples. You know, the disciples got a lesson here to learn because Jesus corrects them. He corrects them. Why were you afraid? Where is your faith? What he was saying, I, I, I am right with you. I am also in the storm. I was also there in the boat. And just before the storm, you fellows saw my miracles there. And you all are still afraid. Wasn't my presence enough? But for many of us, the presence of God is not enough. We want the power of God. God, get do something and get me out. I'm not interested. Even if you are not present, that's fine. But get me out. We are more interested in the power of God. Like the disciples. Than the presence of God. I remember when I was reading the story of Moses in the book of Exodus. Numbers. Deuteronomy. When Moses was leading the people of Israel. And there were times they faced problems. They faced problems like the Red Sea. Then in the desert, they faced problems. And every time Moses faced a problem, we must read, you know, what he prayed. He never prayed, God, show us your power. He says, he says only one thing. God, I just want to know, are you with us? If your presence is not going, this is what he says. If your presence is not going with us, God, we are not going. We want to know whether you are present with us as we face this problem, Lord. That's what Moses said. You see, that's a sign of people who are grown close to the Lord. People have grown growing close to the Lord. They seek his presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C. -E -E. But people who are still struggling to grow close to the Lord, they seek the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E of the Lord. What do you seek most of the time? As you go through the storm, his presence or his presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E -E the present can be the power of God. The presence of the Lord was with them in the storm. The disciples were not alone. And so God promises us that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is there with us when we face the storm of our life. Let us become people who seek the presence of God more, P-R-E-S-E-N-C, -E not the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E Don't come to the Lord every time to get a present from him, but come for his presence. Just come for him. The presence in the storm. So we have seen the three Ps right now, the probability of a storm. The storm comes suddenly. It doesn't announce that it is coming in your life, but it comes suddenly. We are not aware, but the Lord is aware. The One of the questions for me as I was reflecting on this passage, did Jesus know a storm was coming? He knows everything. He knew. Only the disciples never knew. And that's why sometimes when I face a problem, I often say, the Lord knew, the Lord already knew that this problem was going to come. Only I never knew. I just got to know this problem has come. But the Lord knew. The Lord knows that this was going to happen. And if the Lord knows, the Lord also knows how to get me out and when to get me out. I need to relax. Oftentimes when a storm comes, we also think that we, have, we, have, we get caught off guard. We are off guard. And we think even God was not ready. God is saying, oh God, you know, where? as if Jesus is saying, Oh dear, where did this storm come? I had no idea where this storm came. He, he knows it's going to come. Only we don't know. 
we are caught off guard god is not caught off guard he knows it's going to happen and he knows how to get us out so the probability of a storm the paradox of a storm we are walking in obedience we are walking close to the lord yet the storm comes the presence in the storm the lord is with us but our problem is we are more interested in the power of god than the presence of god the fourth the fourth p the peace in the storms the peace in the storm now how does one experience the peace in the storm we, many a times we think peace peace is the absence of a storm no 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 in fact peace can be experienced right in the midst of a storm so how does one experience peace in the midst of a storm look at verse 39 in this passage it says jesus got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still and the wind doubt died down and it was completely calm the peace how do we experience peace in the storm yes jesus will calm the storm outside one day but how can he calm the storm inside of us the storm of fear and the storm of anxiety that's the storm the lord of calm wants to calm first the storm of fear and the storm of anxiety that is going on in our hearts so there is a storm on the outside a problem that creates a storm on the inside called fear and anxiety i firmly believe we we start experiencing the peace of god when we become aware of the presence of god in the storm let me give you two passages in the bible that talk about that people experience deep peace in fact one 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 passage from the bible and one example from my personal life so how do we know we if we read the story of jacob in the book of genesis chapter 28 onwards we have the story of jacob and we all know that jacob how he cheated his brother he cheated his father took the birth right of his brother and then the his brother esau start decided to kill him his mom comes and tells him you better run away because your brother is planning to kill you and joseph is running away you know he thought you know cheating his father and brother his life will be happy but now joseph jacob is facing a storm because he has cheated his father he has cheated his brother and he is running away from the home just imagine when you are running away all disturbed you have cheated your dad you have cheated your brother your brother is after your life now it's like a storm you are facing this storm jacob is facing because he's he was walking in the wrong way and he comes to a particular place and he sleeps we all know that story and when he sleeps he sees a dream in that dream he sees a ladder and the angels coming up and down the ladder next morning when jacob gets up it's very interesting to note what he says he says this place looks very strange for that's the first thing yes going through a storm is a very strange place but then he says after the he sees the dream he says god this is what he says god was in this place and i never knew it god was in this place and i never knew it god is with us in the storm i never knew it and after that we find it says jacob peacefully goes on his way his problems have not changed but jacob has changed and what has changed jacob he knows now god is with him the lord is with him and that's what gives him peace it was here in the in the year 2004 or 5 i don't know the exact year my children were very small at that time my son was just 2 uh, or 3 years old and we were facing a problem in a city the problem was power failure you know lights will suddenly go off and they will it will go off for 5 6 hours there was some power uh, crunch the city of mumbai was going especially in thane where i stay uh, we were facing this problem and so one evening i was at home i had no talks so i was at home and i was playing with my son in the evening and it was uh, the lights were on at that time and suddenly the lights went off 
the lights went off my son was 2 or 3 years old at that time i took him and i put him on the sofa in the hall and i said you sit here this is the safest place sit here on the sofa i'm going inside the bedroom the torch is inside the bedroom i'm getting the torch and coming i put my son on the sofa and as i was started moving towards the bedroom suddenly i found someone has caught my leg and when i looked it was my son who had caught my leg and he was catching my leg tightly and i told him you you sit on the sofa that's the safe place and my son you know you couldn't talk that much but whatever he was talking i understood he says dad the safe place is here the safe place is at your feet the safe place is when i am with you and you are with me in this darkness we experience peace in the storm when we discover the safest place is the presence of god that night when i got this news i shared in my story when i was talking to my mentor he asked me the question which is the safest place and i said the hands of the lord and then he told me place your wife in the hands of the lord brothers and sisters the peace comes the peace comes when we recognize we are in the safest place the presence of god the lord is with us he has not forsaken us he is in the boat even if like jacob and jonah we have gone wrong he still never leaves us he wants us to come back to him and he will send a storm to bring us back to him but the safest place is to be with the lord so that's the fourth p the peace in the storm the fifth p the purpose of storms in our life the purpose why in the world god allows a storm to come now it's not clear in this passage why jesus allowed the storm to come but of course god always has a purpose let's look at some of the scripture passages to look at the purpose of the storm i'd like to take two verses from psalm 119 psalm 119 verse 67 and verse 71 which tells us sometimes god allows us to go through suffering god allows us to go through problems and this is why god allows in psalm 119 verse 67 it says before i was afflicted i went astray so what the psalmist is saying before god the storm came i was going wrong and thank god the storm came i got into the right direction he says before i was afflicted i went astray i was going wrong before the problem came verse 17 verse 71 psalm 119 verse 71 says it was good for me that i was afflicted that i may learn your word or learn your statutes it was good for me look at the psalm is what is saying it was good it was not bad yes the storm is bad but it was the storm was good for me it was good for me that i was afflicted that i may learn to keep your statutes here the psalmist is saying god allowed the storm to come because i was going in the wrong direction and the storm brought me back to god i was going away from god and it was a storm that brought me to god let's have a look at our each of our lives how did we come to the lord we were having a storm and that storm brought us to the lord how many of us have grown in our spiritual life it was when we have gone through the storm like verse 71 it was good for me that i was afflicted that i may keep your word we were going through a storm and because of that storm we have grown more closer to the lord so the purpose of the storms is to bring us to the lord and those who are close those who are already uh come to the lord in order to get more closer to the lord we face a storm the intention of the storm is to get you to the lord and to get you more closer to the lord that's what happens to the disciples they run to jesus jesus is there in the boat and the disciples have ran to jesus they have come more close to jesus through the storm sixth the 6p 
the product of the storm. What does God produce in me? What is God trying to produce in me when I go through the storm? The disciples we find, they go to the Lord and they tell him, Lord, don't you care? Look at verse 38. You know, storms, when we face the storms, we often feel that God does not care. If he cared, why this problem has come? Why this storm has come? And the disciples discovered God cares. How does God care? They realized later, he was there. He was there in the storm. He was sleeping. Now, if you look at the life of St. Peter, uh, somewhere in Acts chapter 11, we have a story of the St. Peter. I think so Peter learned from the Lord. Huh? He learned from the Lord that when you are in the storm, you must... You must also sleep well. What is happening in Acts chapter 11? Herod the king kills James. The apostle James is killed and Peter is put into prison. Peter is put into the prison. And the whole church is praying for Peter. And Herod decides that next day, Peter is going to be executed. He's going to kill Peter in order to please the Jews. And the church of God starts praying for Peter. As they are praying for Peter, it says, the, as they start praying for the Peter, the angel of the Lord comes in the jail. We know that story. The angel of the Lord comes in the story. And when the angel of the Lord comes, what is seeing Peter? Peter is sleeping and he's sleeping deeply because it says, if you read the story, the angel had to shook him. Which means Peter was in a deep sleep. How can you go to sleep and you know next day you are going to be killed? You won't get sleep. And Peter has somehow learned from this story, he has grown now. In Acts chapter 11, Peter has grown in his spiritual life. That he, how do I know I am grown in my spiritual life? I can sleep in the storm. <laughs> I get good sleep in the storm. Why? I know God is there. We will also learn why Peter was sleeping. Huh? Another reason why Peter was sleeping. We will learn now. We will coming to that end. The other side. Remember the word other side. We are coming to that. Peter knew God cares and he was sleeping. And next day, remember, he was going to be executed. If you and I know next day we are going to be hanged, that night you don't get sleep. And Peter is sleeping. And the angel shakes him. So what is the product of the storm? We discover in the storm that God cares. We also discover that God is in control. The disciples discovered that, that God is in control, that Jesus gets up and he tells the storm, be still, and the storm obeys. God was in control when the storm came and God was so much in control, he could stop the storm whenever he wanted. We need to remember these two things when we go through a storm and these are the two things we need to grow in. God cares. The two C words, care and control. God cares and God is in control. Amen. Hallelujah. God is in control of the storm. So up till now we have looked at the probability of a storm, the paradox of a storm, the presence in the storm, the peace in the storm. We looked at the fifth P, the purpose of the storm, to get us to the Lord and to get us closer to the Lord. And the product of the storm, sixth P, we learned the product of the storm. That we learn God cares and we learn God is close. God is in control. Now let's turn to the last P, the promises God gives us in the storm of life. What is the promise God gives us when we go through a storm in our lives? Let's read. Uh, there are two verses I would like to read. What is the promises? How can I experience peace in the storm of life? What are the promises God gives? So there are some lessons we are going to learn as we end up, as we conclude. The first lesson is expect the promises. Huh? We are looking at the promises. Please expect stormy seas in your life. Expect stormy seas in your life. Don't get shocked by it. Don't be surprised by it. Expect it. 
today perhaps things will all go right with you who knows somewhere around the day things will suddenly go wrong don't get shocked don't get surprised expect second second promise when you expect when the stormy sea happens remember jesus is on board jesus is in the boat jesus is with me storm is not the absence of the pres- of god but storm is also means the presence of god is there second point always remember jesus is on board jesus is with you third please remember it is faith that drives out fear the disciples were afraid the problem was not the storm the problem was the fear of the storm and some of us are fear wondering we have a problem uh, that's not the problem the fear of the problem is a big problem and faith will drive out fear the opposite of faith is not unbelief the opposite of faith is fear jesus tells the disciples why are you afraid when i was there with you why are you afraid the third lesson we learn is faith drives out fear fourth now this is where we have to learn god assures us of a safe landing and i want you to give me your top most attention your top most attention avoid getting distracted now brothers and sisters give me your top most attention as we conclude god promises us a safe landing remember we started that passage in verse 35 where jesus tells the disciples let us go to the other side other side they started to go to the other side in chapter 5 come to chapter 5 verse 1 it says the disciples went to the other side which means even through a storm the disciples reached their destination they landed safely to the other side they started the remember the journey started with the disciples going to the other side and the journey ends the disciples have reached the other side now please listen to me carefully sometimes god will take a storm out of your life he will take the storm out so that you can reach the other side and praise god for that the other side at that time is you reach your goal you land safely you come out of the problem you have reached the other side you have come out of the problem but now listen to me sometimes the storm can drown you don't be afraid even if you are drowned you will still reach the other side heaven now many of us we don't see that we don't want to be in the second other side even if the storm is taken away we are on the other side even if the storm drowns us we are on the other side we are with the lord we are alive we are with the lord we are dead we are with the lord what are you afraid of but we are not interested in the second other side heaven you're getting the point brothers and sisters in both the cases we win whether the storm goes or whether the storm drowns me i will be on the other side now i'll tell you you know we sometimes we sing songs but we are not interested we are not serious about singing what are some of the songs we sing i just want to be where you are i know brother glen from potta he sings this song i just want to be where you are dwelling daily in your presence which means god i just want to be where you are and we sing that song we sing that song god i just want to be where you are god says yeah seriously you want to be where i am tonight only i am taking you where i am 
just imagine if God takes this song seriously. You just want to be where I am? Come, come, come. Tonight only come. I'll tell you, all of us will stop singing that song and we'll say, God, not that place and not that place where you are. I mean, blessed sacrament presence, blessed sacrament. You know, I just want to be where you are in the blessed sacrament. Not that other side, not that other side, Lord, this other side. Come on, brothers and sisters. Let every fear go. What are you afraid? What is the maximum thing that can happen to you in a storm? <laughs> we will be dead. But that means to go on the other side. We don't want to be that other side. The thing is, as I conclude, whether God takes away the storm, we go to the other side, we reach our goal. When God takes away the storm, we reach our goal. But when God does not take away the storm, we still, and the storm drowns us, we still are on the other side. We reach our destination, heaven. Rejoice, brothers and sisters, in both the cases, we are winners. Whether the storm goes or whether the storm drowns us, we will reach the other side. Hallelujah. Let it drive out all fear. But that also shows that many of us have a fear of death. The greatest fear. Death is not a problem. Fear of death is a big problem. If you find you are afraid about the other side, the second other side, let this week be a week praying and asking God to deliver you from the fear of that other side, heaven, the fear of death. We are winners in both the cases. Both the cases, we will reach the other side. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this morning. We praise you and thank you for your word. Lord, I personally want to praise you and thank you. This is one of my favorite passages, especially that word other side, Lord. I remember, Lord, one day when I was studying this passage, how much I laughed at the end when I was writing that last point, Lord, that you will give us a safe landing, that in both the cases, whether the problem goes away or whether the problem drowns me, in both the cases, Lord, I am a winner. I reached the other side. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us. You never forsake us. But Lord, sometimes forgive me. I'm more interested in your power than in your presence. I want to experience a power more, Lord, not your presence. Forgive me, Lord, for those times I have sought your power more than your presence. Make me a person who will seek your presence more in my life. May I be interested, Lord, in growing more close to you than just experiencing your power. Help me to believe, even if I'm going through a storm at this particular moment, that you care. You care. You are in control. You're in control in both the ways. Whether the storm goes or whether the storm drowns me, I will reach the other side. Lord, take away the fear, the fear of that second other side, that maybe the storm may drown me and I will reach, I will reach the other side where you are there forever to be with you. Forgive me for the times, Lord, I have sang songs that I just want to be in your presence. Lord, I always want to be in your presence. I've said and sang, but I've never meant it. And Lord, if you will take it literally, I will so be, I will be so afraid to be really in your presence. I'm so afraid. Do I sing it? I don't mean it, Lord. Forgive me. For those times I have sang words like that, sang songs like that, without really meaning it. But now, Lord, take away every form of fear. Take away every form of fear, knowing. Whether the storm goes or whether the storm drowns me, I will reach the other side. In both the cases, 
I am on the other side. Let all fear go and let your peace come in the midst of the storm that I am facing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.